computer crime and its effects. This is a grade 11 theory topic and I have made this PowerPoint according to the new IEB SAG document. Social engineering. You know that most people love to help. They're nice, they're kind, they're, people are sociable. And the reason that social engineering is called this way is it uses this fact. It uses the fact that people are just generally nice. When they get an email asking them for something, they want to cooperate, they want to help. So they send it out, okay? So social engineering deceives people into giving some personal information that they shouldn't have given. And then it uses this personal information to rob them. It's often done by using email, could be another online technique and the techniques are very manipulative. So shoulder surfing is when someone spies on another person. They might be using their device and somebody's looking over their shoulder like my picture here or they might be using an ATM and this way they obtain personal information like their ID or their password and then you use this information to rob or defraud the person. Dumpster diving. This is, dumpster diving is a physical actual thing that sometimes people look in dumpsters which are huge um, bins in which rubbish is thrown and they go and look for valuable information in there. But dumpster diving online or with computers is when you actually look for valuable information in the trash. And um, you can then use this information to get access to a computer network or website or to defraud a person. Now the trash, when it comes to computers, it could be old computer hardware, like an old hard disk or a flash drive. So it's always very important to make sure that when you throw away a or give away a hard disk or a flash drive that you've cleaned it up properly. And they can find data such as passwords or trusted certificates or there's a whole lot of other things in my picture here that show you information that could be used against you. Phishing, you've probably heard of this, it's a fraudulent technique. It's done using emails and the email pretends to be from a real actual company. People fall for it and then they give out their personal information. The type of information the phishing emails look looking for is a password or credit card details or any data they can use to defraud you. Now there's the Trojan horse um, myth which is where the name Trojan comes from. It was a city called Troy that the Greeks could not capture. They had laid a siege for 10 years. So eventually they brought this huge horse and put it outside the city. And inside the, the, the horse, there was a whole army lying in wait, hiding. And when the city opened the doors to see what the horse was about, then the army was able to capture the, Tro the city of Troy. And that is how Trojans operate. They make themselves look like something useful. It's a bit of software, a bit of something that you download. And then when you click on it and you try and use it, bang, you get a, either a virus or something harmful happens to your computer. It will often be an email at attachment. And that's why most email systems won't let you send .exes because they're difficult to check for viruses. A Trojan can delete files from your computer or it could install software that scans your computer for personal information and then emails it back to the person who wrote the Trojan. Now reverse social engineering is a very interesting um, type of social engineering. It's also called role playing. Here the attacker makes physical contact in some way with the personal company he's attacking but he's not going to come across as an attacker, obviously, when he does this. So he might just go and put up signs in the company with his own number, as if he was the technical support person. So you contact him when you need technical support. Or he might try to convince the person or the company that they've got a problem. 
and then when the attacker can access their system because they give him access to go repair the problem and then he commits fraud. So it's called reverse social engineering because in this case the attacker does not contact the company, he more like tries to get the victim to contact him. So that is a reverse way of operating. Um, using social media for social engineering is done a lot. There are two methods. The one is an account takeover. So they somehow manage to log in to your social media account. And then they've got access to all your contact, contacts. They can message them or tag them. And when the person, the contact responds to the post or the message, then they carry out an attack against them. Another technique is to gather information about you using your social media. So they might gather from Facebook, from Instagram, from LinkedIn, even anywhere that you put information about you. And then they can make themselves look just like you when they contact anyone you know. And they can create really good phishing emails. And the emails are convincing. Or they can even email you. And they're very convincing because they really look like they know you. They know all your interests because they've been spying on you. Or else a friend might believe the email really comes from you and trust it. And then they give out information they shouldn't. Hackers. These are people who access computers, although they're not authorized to. There are some that aren't actually up to any anything malicious, like the white hat hackers, they are the good guys, and they test the system security. And if there are any flaws, any anywhere that they think the system's not secure, they will tell the company and the company can improve it. But then you get your black hat hacker, which is also called a cracker, and they hack with malicious intent. They're trying to steal money or they have other clever goals that they're going to implement and then do some harm to the company. Then in between these two, there's the gray hat hacker. They hack, but they don't try and steal or damage. But often they let the administrator know they have all sorts of funny intents or goals and um, yeah, they're a little bit mixed up. They may, may do some good, but they may also do some harm. Then crackers, these ones are um, the ones who are really malicious and they access a computer system without authorization. And then they commit cyber crime. And many websites refer to crackers as malicious and hackers as non-malicious, but it's a little confused, confusing because crackers are also called black hat hackers. So um, a virus author, that is the person who writes all of this horrible software that can attack your computer, malware. So they intentionally write code to do damage to computers. It's very sad that if somebody is that clever and gifted, why don't they just go and get a good job as a programmer? But anyway, this is what they do. They might have some sort of personal vendetta or they're trying to get back at somebody that they, they want to get revenge on. And then they write viruses that can spread themselves and harm billions of computers. There are many kinds of computer crimes. The theft of hardware, we've seen that in South African schools. Apparently dozens of schools in the Western Cape have been robbed during the pandemic, which is very sad. There's theft of software, theft of information, identity theft, bandwidth theft, and then theft of time and services. So the theft of hardware, this is where Actual physical computer equipment is robbed. It could also be mobile devices. Um, and then they have access to the data on the equipment, which can be quite scary because, yeah, it's, as we've spoken about, the data can contain personal information or information that allows for people to rob others. 
The theft of software, this is also called software piracy. And it's whenever you copy or someone copies software illegally. And they are stealing it because it is copyrighted. They were supposed to pay to use it and they're using it without paying. And that is the same as theft. It could, could even be sharing copyright protected software. Maybe you bought a copy and then you share it and you weren't supposed to. The theft of information. This is when you copy, maybe somebody's leaving a company, they've been fired and they quickly copy data onto removable media. They might copy all of the company's customers and steal that data. They could copy the data through a network or using a backdoor, some clever technique. Um, and then their reason for stealing the data, they could use it to sell the data. Some data is very valuable to a competitive a competitor company. Um, they could use it themselves. They could blackmail someone with that information. Or they could cover something up by destroying the data. If they remove the data from the system completely, they then destroy the system. Maybe they've covered up some sort of crime. And then there are all sorts of malicious reasons they may have for stealing information or data. Identity theft. This is when someone steals your details and then pretends to be you. For example, they may get your ID, your information data from the internet. And then the worst part of it is that the owner of the ID does not realize it's been stolen from him because there's no physical document that's gone. So identity theft can be quite scary. The theft of resources. This could be stealing computer power, like processing power in some clever way. It could also be network bandwidth. And there's an example called piggybacking. And this is quite common. You use somebody else's internet connection and you don't pay for it. So somehow or other, um, you manage to find out the, the person's Wi-Fi password and you piggyback and use their Wi-Fi. And everything slows down a lot and it's really irritating. And maybe somebody's got capped Wi-Fi. They only get a certain amount of data per month and you're using a whole lot of it or whoever the thief is. So on this is maybe more where there's um, no password or an old password or a bad password policy. So personally on my Wi-Fi, I've put a really long, complicated password um, because I found that people were logging on otherwise. Um, and network related criminal activity will lead back to the IP address of the owner of the network. And how can you protect your computer? Here are a few little tips that you can use. Obviously, good physical security is important. Then install and update antivirus software. If you've got the latest Windows version, it has an antivirus included. Make sure it's switched on. Um, use a firewall, switch on the firewall. Keep your software up to date. Remember that is key because there could be um, virus signatures that keep getting updated. Be aware of the current trends in computer crime. We've just spoken of a few. Um, dumpster diving and shoulder surfing and things like that. Be aware that they're happening so that you can guard against them. Just apply common sense. Be, be clever. Know how to spot a phishing email. And then also follow a good password policy. You don't use the same password everywhere. Make sure you use clever passwords. And that's all for today. Goodbye.